Hello and welcome, my name is Nilaus. This is the fourth installment of our tutorial series of, well, base in a book, where I will provide some insights and also provide some blueprints in order to build a novel base. Well, now we get to one of the more controversial parts of Victorio, the beloved, the hated, the main boss, or the array or whatever we want to call it. Basically, we are at a point in sort of the progression, the maturity of the base, where we have created some building, some basic smelting arrays. How many we have, that depends on your wish to uh, to expand, but we do have some. That is all covered in my episode three of this uh, tutorial. It's not a campaign, it's not a series, but it is uh, sort of following a natural progression through the lifetime of a base. Now, let's look at this. Well, the main bus, it has several... Uh, attributes the main point of actually building main boss oh is that it makes all the materials readily available and instead of sort of figuring out how to build copper from one end of the base to the next you know it's right there and you feed it in from one side and you can pull it out to the sides basically the idea is as we have here i put it on here basically i'd want four of each that's a good way to start always now we need some and rules here always leave two spaces in between and i'll get to why that is so basically it's four lanes two spaces four lanes two spaces four lanes two spaces and so on and so forth however many you want there are kind of a different parts of philosophies about this some argue that you only take things out from one side which means that you can extend the bus as much as you want in the other side because you will only ever take it from one side i am not a big proponent of that uh, philosophy i propose that you build from both sides and you reserve a dedicated amount of space for the bus how very much it is in this case what i have decided is like this so here one two three four five six seven seven this is very narrow maybe eight is a better i just chose seven in this case that means seven uh, four that's eight, 28 lanes now, my first recommendation is get four lanes of iron, get four lanes of copper, two lanes of steel, two lanes of green circuits, and some red circuits, some blue circuits, those kind of things. And I prefer to have also stone on the bus, also stone bricks, of course. And then there will come some other things down here, like plastic, for example, or it could be other things that you might need in vast quantities, like ammunition, depending on sort of your setup and your proclivities you can also even have the liquids on the bus by replacing the belt lines with pipes it works very similar however for this one we will be focusing on the main bus line now in this case you can see my uh, i wouldn't say patented walking path but i really like this because it delimits the smelting area to the left to my bus area to the right Yep, and now we craft manual stuff. And that means I start the bus from the right hand side. I'm not going to build all of these, I'm just going to build it like this. Now, another thing, two things more that is important. The idea is that we take things off the bus, leave the space, do not build, do not build the bus next to your walking path because you build it and then you start ripping things off and you're in the middle of the walking path that is no good additionally when you take something off the bus and start building uh, assemblers at this location do not build the assemblers here just it's an infinite by infinite map build them like this it's fine don't worry about it don't build so close you're not constrained for space now let's uh, start talking about sort of the concepts of the base the first thing I want to do, talk to you about is since we have four lanes here, four lanes here, it's very important that these are always balanced because you will be dragging out from the side. And if you keep dragging out from the side, it will no longer be balanced. So the first thing I wanted to show is a blueprint that we have here. This is the blueprint book that we'll be using this episode is a four by four balancer. We will put these in on the ones where they have Points. Of course not on this one because I don't want to mix all of these. However, I do like mixing them there just to make sure these are remaining balanced. Now let's build this one. The 
This is also a, an, a way to build it fast. See, that's pretty fast, pretty efficient way of building it. Now, this takes whatever input here and splits it out over four lanes, which means that by now we have four lanes. And there, of course, if you only have two lanes in, you can never have four lanes full out here. That's kind of obvious, right? So let's um, please keep that in mind that this is a, uh, but in my preference, or I have a preference for building it all four lanes immediately, even though I do not have everything to support it. And then I will scale up as I need it more. So for example, I need more copper, I'll scale up more copper. The reason for me to do it that way is because if I drag things out, if I only had two lanes, let's say I'd only continue the two copper lanes and I needed to drag something downwards, I'd have to split it from here and move it down. Well, if I split it here and then suddenly expand it, ah, that's going to be silly. So therefore, I prefer splitting it. It's also It also looks like nice. So there's an aesthetic feel, but this is a bit controversial. Some may not like it that way. In any case, let's look at how to split things off the bus because there are more or less a number of different ways. Let's start from from uh, the get go. Uh, that's not a good place to start. We'll start with this one. This is the full line extent extraction. What happens here is that I take an entire dedicated line and bring it out. So I'll bring it out like this. In my case, jump under, and then I can start building stuff with my assembler here and assembler here, whatever, drawing that line. So that's the first one. Use this if you know that you must have a full line out. For example, for green circuits, you want to make sure that you get a full line out, you take it there. Another potential is sort of the more common one. This is the half bus line. Actually, uh, let's do it slightly different. But I don't need to build as much. Yeah, this one is not strictly mandatory. What happens? What happens here is that I take this lane. Now ignore that. What happens before? I take this lane and I split it. That means half goes up and half goes onwards. That's fine. I would strongly recommend that you either before or after, but not both, you balance it. Because if you do not do this and you extract from the line, here you're also extracting from the line. At this point, this will get half, this will get half, this will get a quarter, this will get a quarter. This line is very weak. Ideally, you would hand a full four to four balancer, but you don't want to squeeze it in everywhere. So my take on it is you either you do it this way. So after you take something off, you balance it with the lane next to it. So at least in this case, now we have half of it going out here, and these two will be three quarters of a lane. That's more, more akin to what we need. And of course, if they jam towards the end line, that's fine. That's also, um, then it will fill up and all of it will be directed out. However, uh, the alternative, and I'll just explain Oops, is splitting before. If you split before, that means after this, this one will be half until you get to the next one, which means these this section here will only have half capacity. For me, I'd rather use it. It's built, therefore I always split after drawing out. And that's why I recommend it. Oops, sorry. I mean, or rebalance. So that's another way. Let's go back to the one I had at this point. This was sort of the full line extraction. And the next one, next way of extracting is this one. Let's build it first. This is if you want to drag something out that is not on the top lane. In terms of iron or copper, it doesn't make much sense, but it makes a hell of a lot of sense down here. So let's actually build it here. Now I need to drag, drag the stone up, but I mean, this is a bad idea, right? So what I need to do is, so 
but it drags half a belt out and it jumps over. Next one is also best represented. The last one of these examples is something like this. Oops. So this one is, again, I'm checking half a belt out, but I want to only get it on one side. Either because I only want it on one side, I don't want so much storage on the belt. This could be, for example, for blue circuits that you don't want to store too much on the belt. So you want to limit it to only the one side. Or it could be because something else is coming in. That could be, for example, I, for whatever reason, I want to merge the stone, black, stone bricks with that. And now I'd be, I'd be doing something like this. And there we have now a dedicated line. The way, that, and now we get to the reason why it is important that you only build it. Because this one will be, I don't know what, see that's a problem. And therefore, as long as we, because we start this while we only have yellow, they can only jump over four lanes. And that's why the bus is always built four lanes. There is some merit, and maybe that's something that to be to considered in the future is if you only build it with red with red belts, then you can say you have six lines. On the other hand, a four by four balancer doesn't take up much space, while a six to six balancer takes a lot of space and it's harder to find in line. And now, for example, I've been drawing out from this belt three times. That means the outer, the belts are no longer balanced. Even though I just put this extra balancer here, they are no longer balanced. And the way I would round it off is just by saying, you know what, I have a bit of room here. Let's make sure that things are balanced. So whatever percentage I have available, it will be split evenly on, on the belts I have. And of course, you can, one of the key points to this, I mean, that's a key attribute and a, and a challenge here. It's very easy to inspect. If these belts are running at, are low, you have to squeeze in more from the other side. Once you've upgraded to four yellow belts and it's still not getting to the end of the bus, in a reasonable manner, you scale it up to four red belts and then even to four blue belts if you feel like it. And then everything goes up, everything becomes red belts, except I would say, do not take the off, uh, offshoots here, the branches, just keep them yellow, but make sure that this one is red. Otherwise it'll kill the productivity because it'll, it'll not allow enough to go through the bus. Yeah, so that's a really easy way to, uh, to see if your base has enough raw materials. Just look at the bus, be easy visual inspection, and it's brilliant. That's, I think that's another key strength of it. One of the shortcomings of it is that it prioritizes the first things first, which means that it's built, it's built extended onwards and onwards as the game progresses. And that means whatever you build at the end, let's say um, blue circuits will, I'll have greens on this one, the green circuits will be used for everything before it gets to the blue circuits, but the blue circuits will use a lot of green circuits. So that's kind of impractical because you will only get the residual ones everyone else has had theirs. So in order to prioritize things on the bus, you have to prioritize them in the sequence that they are built, which is not particularly practical. Hence the main solution is you just have to jam more in so that it gets to the end. Just keep pushing things in until they get to the end. And I can tell you that in a normal vanilla game, this four lanes of iron, four lanes of copper will not cut it in order to make blue circuits at a decent amount because that's simply too much iron and copper that's going to be uh, eaten up by that. In any case, this is a very short introduction to the main bus, how it works, how it operates, how we split from it, how we balance it. And yeah, I think that's uh, basically it. We'll be, of course, continuing in more sessions with more details in various other parts of the base, and they will all be based upon dragging things off the main bus. So what if you do something else that's going to be looking different? But in most of my, I'll be starting visiting, you will take the materials off the bus and then start building. In any case, I hope you liked it. I hope it was useful. And be sure to leave a like, a comment, a subscribe if you want more of this type of thing or other types of things that I produce. And yeah, see you in another one. So thank you very much for joining and see you next time. Bye.